Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Before I deal with the matter this, at, at, at our disposal now, <clears throat> I would like to express my condolences to three family members in Denry. One is the Dorin family of Beirut. The second is the Felixia family of Green Mountain. And the third is Miss Ealing's husband. I know him as Backfoot. I want to express my condolences to the family and to wish them strength and courage during the peri period of bereavement. Mr. Speaker, I stand in support of this bill, which focuses on the ascension of the Caribbean Court of Justice as the final court of appeal in civil and criminal matters for St. Lucia and those countries of the Caribbean community, which are parties to the agreement and have acceded to the appellate jurisdiction. Mr. Speaker, while the ascension to the CCJ from the Privy Council is a historic moment to embrace, celebrated, and preserved by St. Lucians and all the people of this region, I am mindful that there are many ordinary St. Lucians who are not familiar with the workings of the CCJ and I'm hoping that in the near future, Mr. Speaker, substantial communication and outreach initiatives in Creole will be made available so that the elderly folks in the rural communities will be in a better position to understand and appreciate what we have accomplished here today. Mr. Speaker, I am cognizant that not everyone will embrace and celebrate this achievement today. There are other persons who may have objected to this transition for various reasons. Change is often resisted at first until the works are in motion. Eventually, everyone comes to the realization that there is nothing to fear at all. Mr. Speaker, it is expected that the debate on the ascension to the CCJ will continue long after today. However, I am extremely, extremely confident that history will reveal it was the right decision. Clearly, historical events have led us to this juncture. Mr. Speaker, in the 1950s, the UK government granted independence to four islands in the region, namely Jamaica, Barbados, Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago. Early 60s. Early 60s, that's what I said, yeah, thanks. This in initiative opened the floodgates, triggering calls for independence in the other remaining British territories. The transition from dependence to independence meant that the islands were now free and in full control of their destiny as they approach institutional frameworks and development for the next generation. To quote Mr. Speaker, Honorable Dr. Kenny Anthony, I quote, the establishment of the CCJ has been one of the major successes of CARICOM's collective governance. I don't know if you can remember that, but his statement was delivered on March 10th, 10th, 2015, when he engaged young Caribbean minds in a lecture delivered at the Augustine campus of the University of West Indies. Do you remember, Mr. Honorable? He can't remember that. This message, Mr. Speaker, is clear that we need to take control of our destiny and make our own decisions. Mr. Speaker, as I focus on the man, the ordinary man, the lay person, the farmer, the fisher folks, the elderly, the, and young people, it is not unreasonable for everyone to ask, what is in this for me? 
How will the CCJ impact my life or my children? What are the advantages and disadvantages of the CCJ? Mr. Speaker, many regional scholars have clearly articulated some enlightened and passionate arguments both for and against the transition to the CCJ. For example, people will tell you that we should remain with the Privy Council because one, it has been in existence since, 19, since 1843. They are experienced. They have gotten right on many occasions. They have a good reputation, Mr. Speaker. It is perceived to be objective and impartial since it is remote from the Caribbean and the decisions are made primarily on the law. Foreign investor confidence in the Privy Council. Judges are highly qualified and experienced. The high financial costs required to set up and run the CCJ. Risk of political appointments of judges. We live in a small state, a small region. Most people would have had some connection or relations. Poor lower court infrastructure. Dilapidated, dilapidated buildings, air quality issues, etc., etc. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, on the other hand, there are those who would prefer the CCJ for the following reasons. The Privy Council is too far and costly when you consider affairs, accommodation, and legal representation in the UK. It will remove the colonial cloud over our heads. The CCJ will be held in all islands. There is the likelihood that cases will be scheduled and heard in quick time. The overall cost of cases will be cheaper than going to the Privy Council based on proximity and economic situation in the Caribbean. Under the CCJ, justice is not based on pay to play. This means that the average man who may have won his case at the lower courts can now be relieved that his inability to finance the appeals process at the Privy Council will not work to their disadvantage or against them. Mr. Speaker, within the Caribbean, there are highly trained and experienced Caribbean judicial officers who served in international bodies, such as the International Criminal Court and in many Commonwealth countries. The CCJ is required for the Caribbean single market economy. The original jurisdiction of the CCJ is required for the functioning of the CESME. Mr. Speaker, in my previous um, employment as a forester, I can recall a number of persons coming to me to discuss land disputes. For example, they have been occupying private lands for a number of years and the landowner would ask them to evict the lands and not offer any form of compensation. Mr. Speaker, now those persons have an opportunity to go to the CCJ and not have to find their way all the way to the UK to deal with matters like this. So I believe, Mr. Speaker, it's a step in the right direction for our government, clearly indicating to the people that what we promise as a government, we will deliver. Mr. Speaker, as I analyze the pros and cons of the arguments in support of or against the ascension to the CCJ, I am mindful that the CCJ mission statement that states providing accessible, fair, and efficient justice for the people and states of the Caribbean community, unquote. Mr. Speaker, it can be concluded that the overall objective here is to achieve justice for all. Mr. Speaker, the vision of the CCJ emphasizes what we as a people in this region strive to achieve, to be a model of judicial excellence. Mr. Speaker, the values of the court resonate with what we as a people seek to practice and uphold. Integrity, honesty, doing right and standing firm. Industry, be diligent and 
go above and beyond. Courtesy and consideration demonstrate care and respect for all. Excellence demonstrate the highest quality of service and performance. Mr. Speaker, it is abundantly clear that the time has come to move on and chart our own destiny. I stand in firm support of this bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.